Good evening, everybody. It's Live at Five, Tropical Source Field Gun Lessons. Glad to have you with us. A uh, couple of housekeeping things. This is our first Live at Five. Um, uh, a little bit of an experiment. Uh, there's a lot of, we've got a multi-cam sort of thing going on. And it's, uh, uh, I'm a music educator. I'm not a sound engineer, nor am I a, a, a video producer. But um, uh, I want to do some house clean, uh, cleaning. I'll probably say this again later. But uh, if you're watching and you can chat, if there's something wrong, like the video, the uh, uh, volume is weird or something, we would like to know that it's, it's hard for us to tell. Again, I'm just an educator and my helper, why, who goes by the name Miss Chevious, she's helping me tonight. Uh, also, um, I made a mistake and I didn't catch it till just a second ago, but I want to talk about the, uh, the donations just for a second. Uh, it takes money to put these on, but I, I picked a charity uh, the Wichita Children's um, Home, which is in Wichita, of course. Uh, that's a place where I'm going to send some of the donations from tonight if you'd like to do that. But I made a mistake on the pay me, uh, PayPal me because I, I don't normally use that one. So if on this piece of paper it says PayPal me, uh, sorry, PayPal.me slash Brad Shores, not at. That's one of the things I goofed on that. So I'll probably do that again. The information has been running and it will run later. But uh, tonight we're going to talk about the song Up on the Roof is by the Drifters, of course. And uh, the first thing we need to know, I'm going to go over to the whiteboard. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about this song. But uh, this song, if I walk over to the whiteboard, this song is in the key of G, <coughs> which means you can tell that because there's a sharp here. And that just means that, <coughs> excuse me, and this key... G has one sharp. I've laid out the G major scale here for you. I've even gone past that. Here's the G major scale. Now all of the chords in this song are built from the G major scale. You have your uh, G major. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> it's G D B C E G, and you can see the chords on the music. We'll pull that up in a minute. Uh, D F sharp A E D B, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. How to build those chords. But I want you to know that uh, this song. And let's let's pull up the music for them. Uh, you can see on the on the music that uh, it's a key of G, and the first couple uh, chords are G and G, and then there's a G, and then there's an E minor seven, and then the next line there's a C, and then there's a C slash D. Now what that means is it's a C. You play a C chord, but the bass player plays a D. That's all that means. It looks pretty fancy, but that's really all it means. Uh, and so in this in this song, uh, the key of G denotes that you're going to have the G scale and you, anything that you play in this in this chord in this song if you want to uh, do improv you can do the G major scale basically you could say you, you're not going to hit anything wrong if you just play a G major scale but that's not very exciting so um, we want to do some other things so what we're going to do first is I'm going to play through the song and um, I'm going to have the music up there and I'm going to have over my shoulder you can see me playing
what's the basic foundation of how the song works? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about a little bit of improv first, and then I'm going to talk about how to do some double stops on this. So, at, but first, I would recommend uh, learning the song, uh, the melody first, of course. Now, I also want to talk about how to get this music. You'll want to go to bradshoresmusic.com, and then there's a tab that says Steel Drum Music, and you uh, click on up on the roof, and God willing, it will download, and everything will be fine. And you'll get the music, you'll get the, uh, the two tracks, one with melody, one without, and you'll also get the, the PDF file, which are the lead sheet that I just played from. So, I'm very happy for you to do that. And uh, this song, uh, like I said, it's in the key of G. Now, how do I know that? I know that one sharp on that uh, scale, on the uh, staff, means the key of G. So I know, because I have the experience, that I know that there's no chords in here that, that don't, uh, aren't compa compatible with the G major scale. So I can play, yeah, yes, I can play the G major scale. But that just isn't that much fun. That just isn't a whole lot of fun. So we want to play things uh, using the melody. I always talk about quoting the melody. For instance, here's the, the very beginning of the melody. played are in the G major scale. That's B, E, G, A, B. Those are all in the scale. Now I'm going to walk over to the whiteboard and show you some other things. In the scale of G, you have these notes. So if you stay with these notes in the, in the, in the uh, song, you're going to be okay. I also like to use what's called the pentatonic scale, and that are these notes, G, A, B, D, E, and G. The pentatonic scale only has five notes, whereas the regular scale has all eight. The pentatonic scale, I've talked about it on all my videos, five note scale, and the, none of those notes are going to be um, incompatible with this music. So. I really like that scale, especially since you're, when you're learning the song and maybe you're playing through it for the first time. So I'm going to um, play a little bit with this, and I'm just going to do some improv using those notes. So I'm going to start the song again, and I will go back to the pan, and you'll see my hands doing some stuff. So, all right. Here's the pentatonic scale. I did a lot of this. B, E, B, E, G, A, B, and then B, E. I did the different octaves. I did something that I talk about a lot. I did a lot of repetition. I also wanted to remember to tell you, if you have questions, it's a good idea to, to put them in the chat so I can address those. Uh, otherwise, I think you know everything. So, uh, now, if I'm going to do some double stops, double stops just means I'm going to play two notes at once. And so I'm not going to play two notes at once on every note. So what, the way I can figure out what harmony note or what double stop note I want to use, I look at the very first, uh, the, uh, the third major, because of G, and the only choices I have is a G chord. It says that above the music. It says G chord, so the only choices I really have are G, B, and D. Well, I don't have a low B, so I can't really do that. I do have a low I do have a D end of the G, but those don't really sound good. So I'm going to choose not to do that. The first note I'm going to put uh, a, uh, a note with is I'm going to put, um, let's say the major, the fourth major, which has an E minor chord. It has the note that you play is C, so I'm going to play C and E together. I know that that's a, um, that's a 
a really good start for that. So. So, sorry. I just did that one note with the double stop. Now, I could probably go. That's a lot of double stops and it moves really fast. So I'm picking notes that are, are going to sound good. Uh, the next major after that is major five. I see there's a C chord, and I see that the note I'm playing is C, so I know I have the option to play C, E, or G. Well, the melody is already C, so I could play G with that. I don't like the way that sounds. I like the E better. Could I play? Yes. So, the key to learning what you can play with it is figure out what the chord is, and then figure out, okay, it's a C chord, it's C, E, G. What note am I playing for the melody? Well, I'm playing a C, so that eliminates that as a, as a harmony note. So I have two left. I have E or G. Uh, what I don't like are notes that are four notes away. I like notes that are six notes away. Now I'm going to go back to the whiteboard and show you that. When I played the note C, there's my C. I always want to have the melody be usually on top, so that's my melody note. I, I love to use the notes that are six notes down, and what it is on this particular uh, chord, it's a C, E, G chord, C and E go together. This is the chord. It's C, E, G. I have them stacked up differently, but that's the melody note. These are my other choices. I don't like the ones that are four notes apart. I like the six ones. There's a good reason for that. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't sound good. All right, back to the front here for just a second. I want to uh, I want to do a little bit more house painting. Uh, one is that uh, we're doing up on the roof, and you can find this music for download free at Bradshaw's Music www.bradshawsmusic.com, and then you go to the ta uh, the tab that says Steel Drum Music, and you click on that, and you will see the up on the roof file. It automatically downloads when you click on it. And it's also uh, yeah, we could run the PowerPoint. That's great. Uh, Miss Chigus is all over it. She, she knows what she's doing. Um, and the other part is I, I would invite you to uh, ask questions or uh, make comments about, hey, we can't hear this, or uh, your hands look funny, or anything like that. Well, not like that, but if you could say, hey, the music is loud, or uh, we need the, this to be louder or softer, we'll do what we can. This is our, our initial our maiden voyage here. So um, I also want to uh, encourage you to... Um, uh, to, to comment, so I'll compare that. I made a mistake on the Venmo, or I'm sorry, on the PayPal me. This is the real PayPal me. I have to go front for just a second. <clears throat> the PayPal me is slash Bradshaw's, not at. It was my goof. And, and you know, it, it does take money. We've had to invest money in doing this, but we really also want to make a donation to people that need it. And we're going to make donations to people um, all over the United States. We just have to um, have suggestions on where to do it. We're starting in Wichita because. We live in Wichita, near Wichita. Uh, so, and if, by the way, if you if we if you feel a uh, earthquake, we've had a lot of earthquakes near Wichita, where we're actually uh, 20 miles north. So, um, again, uh, questions are great, comments are, are great, also. If, if everything sounds good, then, then maybe you could say, "Hey, it all sounds good." Uh, I, that would really help us. Um, let's see. So, uh, back to I want to talk a little bit about a couple of chords here that are a little bit different. So I'm going to go back to the whiteboard for just a second. On the music here, I also saw a C, I'm going to write it out, a C mage 7. And that's a different kind of a chord. So I go back to my C, E, G chord. And I go, okay, well, C, E, G, this 7 says you need to go up another couple notes. I hit, here's the C, C, I skip to make my chord. C, E, G, I'm going to add a D. So the chord that it is now is C, E, G, D. That's how you figure it out. The first note is the, uh, the root, that's one, and then three, five, seven. And that works for any chord. Let's try it over here on the G chord. G, A, <laughs> G, D, D, F sharp. That's a, that's a G major seven chord. That's how you add those, that's how you figure those. Let's try, uh, let's try a D seven. D, skip F sharp, skip A, skip to C. So we have one, three, five, seven. Yes, I'm starting on the fifth note of that scale, but this is this is one where that chord is concerned. One, three, five, seven. 
So what I like to do is write out my scale, and, so, and then you can find your chords. Now, the one I didn't tell you about is the, uh, the E minor 7 chord. E, M, 7. So, okay, let's go to the E. There's E, there's G, there's B, and there would be E, G, B, D. That's an E minor 7 chord. The 7 tells you to make one more jump, like checkers. You're jumping from one to the other. Now, all of these chords are made up with things that are in the G major scale. So really, when you're improv, you don't have any worry, back to the front here, you don't have any worry about if you hit anything in the G major scale on any of these chords, I don't care what it is, it's going to sound good. So, um, uh, Lita, yes, um, the, the music is at, is at uh, go to www.bradshoresmusic.com. And then you go to the steel drum tab. And let me know if you get that. It should be working. Maybe somebody else has gotten there. Kathy, good to see you here. Have you, were you able to get the music? Were you able to go to www.bradshoresmusic? All one word, Bradshores Music. And then go to the steel drum page, or steel drum tab. So, yeah, thank you for, for uh, participating. I appreciate it. Good to see you guys. Um, so back to the end problem. I'm going to go into the pan for just a second here. Uh, I like to use things like uh, embellishments. For instance, um, I like to use uh, a little thing I call a grace note. So I'm going to try one on B. So whatever embellishment you like to do, I like to do a, a note, an embellishment, a half step under it. So if it's a C, uh, sorry, a D, I'm going to go C sharp. I'm going to play the lower note first. So I'm going to play this C sharp to D. And then something else. I played the pentatonic scale going down. Here it is again. And those little embellishments make you sound more professional. That's an, that's a, an example of repetition. encourage you to do is when you're playing this song and, and the track one of the tracks that you get is one that um, it has uh, track number two is no melody it's just just uh, the track the accompaniment behind it and what I would encourage you to do is uh, yes of course learn the song work on your double stops but just play when you play stuff uh, you get more experienced at um, what sounds good to you and what doesn't so uh, let's see, where are we at? We do, do have to do some more uh, house cleaning. And uh, part of what we're doing, as I said, is uh, we're planning to do Live at Five, Sunday night. Um, that might, I hope that's not in the Super Bowl, but, you know, we do that. I like Live at Five. It's easy to remember for me. Live at Five. Of course, it's Central Time, so that means something else to you. But um, I will try. I'm still working on learning to... Uh, Get the word out about the videos. I'm not. I have not accomplished all that uh, yet. So uh, I want to get more viewers out, and I want to give them a heads up. Here's what's coming up. I'm not. I just haven't got done. I'm not um, accomplished with that yet, but I will. So let's check the message board. Okay, Lita. I'm, Lita, I'm glad you got it. Thank you. I'm glad that's working because that that was my intent. Uh, so back to the uh, whiteboard. And on this one where it's a C chord over D, and that you do have that sometimes. Well, I'm gonna have my C chord, there's my C chord, C, E, G. And what that just means is the bottom player or the bass player will play a D. That's the, that's the reason they did that. They want you to have C over D. The C chord over the D bass. And that, that's just a way for uh, people to know how to play that. Like, if you're a bass player, you'll, you'll see that. And if you're a guitar player, you'll see, oh, I'm supposed to play the, the C, not the D. So, um, anyway, that's, that is that. A couple things I noticed today also. Hey, Marsha, good to see you. Thank you for stopping in. I'm, I'm glad that you're enjoying it, and uh, I encourage you to get the music. The, uh, I, I was watching one of my uh, uh, students today, and I, this may or may not be something that uh, is um, something that you deal with, but I noticed that uh, her roles, she did a wonderful job of playing, but her roles were very, very fast. For instance, 
Jones has a band. Her rolls were so fast that the uh, the mallet was hitting the note, and before it could resonate, it was hit again. So I would encourage people to roll fast enough so it sounds good, but not so fast that it muffles the sound. For instance, here's the difference. I'm not playing ultra fast, like, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but there are those who will play. And it just, uh, it becomes so fast that the tone of that note does not come out. That's a little slower, but it's still okay. I can still hear it. So it's not necessarily speed of song, like on the, on the bigger notes. You definitely don't have to roll very uh, fast. See how slow I'm doing that? When I do it fast, it gets a little choppier because I'm not letting the, the, uh, the head or the, the, ma the mallet and the, it's not, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. It's not allowing the, the tone to come up. It's muffling it because when the tone comes up, it hits it again. Now I'm giving it time. Now as I get higher up on the drum, yes, I have to play faster. Smaller notes, faster roll. Because if you don't, you get this. I'm going to do that speed on the big note. It's okay. On the high note, no. It has to be faster. So just experiment with that and be, con and be conscious of that. Um, let's check and see. Great. Well, I'm glad to see everybody's having a good time. We uh, generally just would like to introduce this song and, uh, and uh, just uh, help people. And this is a new song. In fact, the first time I've ever played this song is at this lesson. I, I did it the other day. And I thought, it's a great song. It's not particularly hard, but I noticed that there were some uh, issues about the improv that people would like to know. Most people uh, that I talk to that, don't, or that aren't aware of improv want to know, well, how do you know what to use? Well, yes, there's a little bit of music theory needed, but uh, going back to the whiteboard, I, I can reiterate here. First thing I, you need to do is I need to know what key are we in. Now, I, I describe this as what what are the rules of the game I'm playing? Well, first I have to know what key we're in. This tells me I'm in the key of G. How do I know that? Because I have one sharp. You can either look that up, or if you're like me and have taught music for 35 years, I just know that. So I see it's the key of G, and I say, well, okay, I've got to know the G major scale. And I also could know the G pentatonic scale because I know that a pentatonic scale is five notes. One, two, three, five, and six in any key. And so to... to um, this is going to be messy, but so that you can see this, let's try a different key. All right, let's try the key of C. Why did I pick that one? It has no sharps and no flats. I'm going to write out the key, or the scale. Here's my scale. All right. So, I have the key of C. I kind of went further up. I want the, the C chord. Okay, there's my C chord. C, skip one. That one, skip. There's C. Now I want a C major 7. So I'm going to go there, 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 and skip to this one. Now I have C, E, G, B. That's, my, that's how you figure that out. Ooh. All right, so uh, let's say that it's a, a D chord. Okay, well, it's a D chord. And we're going to get into some stuff that's a little bit messier, but D chord. Okay, let me start with D. There's my D. There, I have skip one. So I have D, F, A. Now, because this is the second the second uh, part of this scale, I know that any chord on the D is, is going to be a D minor chord. That's just the way it is. It's going to be D, F, and A. Now we can talk more about that later, but what I want to encourage you to do, I'm going to go back front for just a second, is to dissect the song and say, okay, what do I have here? I have a G major scale, I have this scale, I have that scale, or look up uh, the chords to it. Now, what I've decided to do with my songs is write the scale, I'm sorry, write the song, write the note names, because some people still need that, or, and, uh, and then write the chord changes. That means anybody that could, uh, that could play this, like if you had a guitar player or a piano player but new chords, they could play with you. So that is included in the class now. I really think that that's, that's pretty comprehensive. But people always want to know, well, how do I know how to harmonize with the melody? Well, uh, can we go back to just the music for just a second? I want to look at major uh, 13, the line 13. Um, how about, yeah, 13 is the fourth line down. The last note in that major of 13 is the, is the first major of the fourth line. Is a, is a, uh, the note is B. 
and the next measure, which it kind of gets into, the chord is G. So again, what are my choices? I have a G chord, G, D, D. The way, the way I remember that, uh, good boys do. That's a, a great way to remember, uh, like the A minor chord is A, C, E, H. I just remember that. It's one of those little uh, things that help you remember. Um, so my choices are, I, can, I know that I have G, B, or D. Well, what's the melody note? Well, the melody note's B, so that takes that out. I don't need that one. So I have G or D. Well, let's try it out. Here's the, here's the, the chord that we're using, G, uh, the G, D, D chord. Okay, but the note, the note is B. So I can put G with that. That sounds great. But I also like the note that's six notes down. Well, there's B, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it happens to be D, but that's part of the chord. So either of these works great. I tend to like this, this, uh, this what we call a sixth apart. These are six notes apart. I had to go down six notes from B to find that note. It's a sixth, we call that. The interval between those two notes is six. I like those. And here's the, the melody, the, the song that goes with it. I like the way that sounds. Now, does it? how about the other? Let's use a G this time. figure out, okay, how many notes can I actually uh, harmonize with? Because some of them are too fast. The, the, line, the melody moves too fast to harmonize with. I like to pick notes that are long. That's a long, that's a, that, you hold that D for uh, eight counts. So that's the one that you definitely either, uh, you want to harmonize with because it makes it fuller. Um, <clears throat> so let's pick another one. Um, Okay, let's look at the line below that. That's the line, it's a line that has 17 on it, and the, the last note in that major of 17 is G. So, so it, the, next, the next chord that you have to deal with is C major seven. Well, how do we spell the C major seven chord? Let's do the, do the math. We have the C, skip D, go to E, skip F, G, skip A, B. I have a C, E, G, D. And the note that I'm playing is G. So what can I use? Well, let's use uh, G and E. Here's my harmony note, here's the note. Here's the harmony. Here's the whole chord. Now I don't have a low B below, I don't have a low B, so that's not an option. I can play the high B, but again, I want the melody to always be the highest note played. 90% of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time. So on this one, the B doesn't work. So what are your choices? <clears throat> e and G, or C and G. Five notes apart like that one was, it's uh, five notes down, it's G, F, E, C, G. That's five, that's called a fifth. Those are not good together. It's not impossible to play, it just doesn't usually sound good. This one's probably better. It just sounds nicer. And as you get into more music, you'll start to realize anytime you have those fifths or fourths, we call those, they, uh, they just don't sound good together. So let's see if people have questions. Well, you guys, it's incredible. You just know everything. That's wonderful. <laughs> just kidding. If you have questions about that or you'd like to see something demonstrated, um, please let us know. Let's see what time we're doing. Oh, it's about 30 already. Okay, well, um, I'm going to do a little bit more housekeeping, I guess. I want to remind you that um, we have um, we have picked out the, world, the, the Wichita Children's Home as our is our place that we're going to donate this this week, and uh, next week it'll be something else. It'll be somewhere else. And if you have a place that you is close to your heart and you uh, would like us to consider that, definitely let us know and we will do that. But um, a, a great way to get money to us is uh, PayPal me slash Brad Short or Venmo at Brad that thing Short. Oh, sorry, that should be a dash. Oh, God. I'm telling you, I'm all over the. I'm I'm all over the. The, uh, I've, I've only venmo two people in my whole entire life, so it's relatively new to me. It's Venmo at Brad Dash Shore is my fault. And I think it's on the it's on the, in, the information correctly. Yeah. The one that I really goofed up was PayPal me uh, forward slash Brad Shore. Right. Uh, great. I'm glad Marcy that you got it. Thank you for doing that. And let, thank you for letting me know that you're here. That's wonderful. Um, so let's, we're gonna play the music again in case somebody missed it. I did notice, 
another thing that I've done wrong on this, I just finished up on the roof this week. The first, the intro is actually four majors before you start the melody. So I probably will correct the, the lead sheet. I probably won't correct the track. So just to let you know about that, I kind of jumped in and realized that the intro was four majors long. It's just hard to find good help, you know, it just really is. But luckily, I have Miss Chevious with me, and she does a, a wonderful job. times I did it, I still am possibly going to mess it up, but uh, I'll try to do it. I'm going to start with C and E. I was talking to one of my students today, and they were talking about their muscle memory getting better. To me, in that key, that is a muscle memory issue. I can do those thirds pretty well, or I'll probably mess it up. It's okay, but I did them slowly. That takes some practice, and when you play a lot of gigs, you have a lot of time to practice. And sometimes, if you play gigs, you know that there's times when nobody's listening, and it's pretty much a paid practice or, or donated practice. And uh, so, those types of things are, are things that I think about, like uh, ascending thirds. You can do ascending, meaning going up. You can go up or come back down. Those are great techniques, and you heard me playing some some scales. Just I might linger on a couple, or I might just uh, just uh, kind of wind down. Sometimes when I'm doing that, I'm also listening to the chord changes because I know in the key of G, there's no way I'm going to get hurt playing anything in G. I can play any note that's in the G scale and probably be okay. I don't care what the chords are in this in this well in this particular uh, song. The, the chords are very compatible, so uh, that is that is a great way to um, just play those notes and, and practice some improvisation. I also uh, did a uh, a little em em embellishment. Another one I like to do is is a turn, and it is. Um, it is a, uh, for instance, it will be B to C. It's pretty fast. I did a B to C and then back to D. You can do them anywhere, but the, the, the formula is play the note you're on, go up a note, and then come back real quick. 
but I, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I want to encourage you again, uh, we'll probably try to rebroadcast at this point. I want to make sure that people know to go to www.bradshoresmusic.com and that is uh, where you can find uh, the tab that says um, Steel Drum Music and it's on there. It'll probably, probably be on there for a while, but not forever uh, because uh, we'll, we'll have to move on at some point. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, if you if you like what you see and you want more music, uh, Tropical Shores Productions is www.tropicalshores.net. That's the place where you find all kinds of tracks. And lately, uh, during the pandemic uh, that we've had this year, I've, I've done quite a bit of writing. In fact, Book 10 will come out uh, within a week. So I've had a lot of opportunities to write and do arrangements. And I just I would encourage you to stop by. And, and we're having sales right now. It's a pretty... Uh, um, Interesting sale because it's 2021. Everything is 21% off. So I thought that was, you know, that was pretty good for me. So uh, Tony, uh, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you, my friend. Um, so that is, I think we're probably just going to conclude there. I want to thank everybody for coming by and uh, just encourage you that we're going to uh, do this next week, live at five, at of course at Central Time. I don't, I don't have anything cool to say for six or seven so but uh, live at five and I want to thank my my sound operator Miss Chevious she's doing a little thing like that and uh, so uh, if you have questions otherwise you know how to get a hold of me and I would just encourage you to, to stop by next week and uh, we'll do it again